Simon. The London Evening Press was his newspaper. He was a busy man, of course. Albert had never seen a man with such a capacity for work and detail. Only yesterday, in a wine bar, Albert had been boasting about him to his friends. He had used the very word detail time and time again in describing Simon's awesome abilities. It was the quality that always marked out the great, their grasp on detail. And that was the problem. Albert could not imagine for a moment that Simon, however busy he was, could ever have been unaware of the LEP's attack on Gordon. He must have known. But if he had known, then how could he have allowed it? Not to warn Albert, not to take him aside and break the news. The same friends that Albert had talked to when raving on and on about him had been cynical. Believe me, one of them had said, no one makes that kind of money without being a complete son of a bitch deep down. You're wrong, so wrong, Albert had insisted. But a memory returned to him now of the strange sensation he had felt standing next to him while they watched the public destruction of Ashley Barson Garland on television. There had been nothing in Simon's expression that Albert could pin down, but nonetheless he had been aware of a feeling, an atmosphere. Intense waves had radiated from Simon that Albert had tried to push to the back of his mind. It had been like smelling fear or sexual desire or guilt, yet it had been none of those things. It had been something else. And the rumours that had flown throughout the company. Cosima, acting independently, get away. She couldn't take a pee without Cotter's say-so, let alone appear on TV. Albert had dismissed all that as office gossip. Maybe, though. Maybe there was something about Simon. If Albert inspected his feelings honestly, maybe, maybe what he had smelt that night had been cruelty. Gordon was his father. Ethical trading was his life. Simon was his god. Fathers are weak. Life is a betrayal. Gods are cruel. Albert had read enough and seen enough to know these as objective facts— but he had not expected to experience them quite so soon and all at once. All three had been taken away from him in a single blow of fate. One minute he had been cheerfully sitting on the tube, listening to music and skimming through the evening paper. He only bought that bloody paper because it was Simon's, and the next minute the triple pillars of his world had crumbled. He rose from the table at the sound of the front door. "'Where is he? Where's my grandson?' Albert folded up the newspaper and slipped it back into his pocket. "'I'm in the kitchen, Grandpa, uh, grabbing some food before you get it all. Cheeky! The boy is so cheeky! Don't you love him?' Albert adored his grandfather. He was a constant reminder to him of his Jewishness and his heritage. It was hard to believe what his parents told him, that many years ago Grandpa had been a history lecturer and local politician, rabidly left-wing, Portia said, which was hard to imagine. Something had happened. Albert never quite got to the bottom of it, something to do with a wrongful arrest. But Peter had left academia and thrown himself into religion and the local synagogue. Theirs was a tight-knit family, by definition. As the son of cousins, Albert had long endured the amusement of his friends at the circumstance of his grandfather also being his great-uncle, and all the teasing suggestions of genetic weakness that went with it. But he loved his family and enjoyed the special closeness that came from not having two warring factions within it. No in-law jokes for the Fendermans. He embraced his grandfather and saw over his shoulder that Portia and Gordon knew nothing. "'So, my darlings, what's to eat?' "'You'll see, Daddy, you'll see,' Portia laughed as she kissed her father and her son. "'You look worried, darling. What is it?' "'Nothing, Mum, nothing. Uh, Tough day at the office.' Albert knew that it was not going to be a hard decision after all. Blood was thicker than worship. This was his family. They counted more than any hero. After all, there was Oxford. It wasn't too late. It was never too late.' "'Hey, the phone's off the hook. Leave it, Dad. No, leave it, really. It's Friday night. The sun has set. No work, no calls.' Peter put a hand to his grandson's cheek. "'Love him. Couldn't you just eat him up? Am I right?' Albert lit the candles and drew the curtains. He knew that soon enough the house would be under siege.' 